Hey guys, this is Janine from Pangolin Photo Safaris and today I will provide you with my first impressions of the Canon RF 100-500mm lens. I just came back from an epic Chobi Delta Kalahari photographic safari in which I was fortunate to test the Canon RF lens mounted on a Canon R6. And not just that, my guest Rima also brought her brand new R5 with the RF 100-500 for first trial in Africa. Being a well-traveled wildlife photographer herself, it was really fun to discuss the lens potential throughout our safari while we got acquainted with it. This video will give you an overview of our first impressions of how this lens handles action-packed wildlife photography from our experience that we gathered throughout the last 12 days. Starting off in the Chobi, we got some amazing low-level footage of lions drinking as well as the iconic elephant interaction in the water. From the word get-go, you can see that the full HD 120 frames per second looks way sharper on the elephants, which were filmed with the RF 100-500mm, which is partially to blame on the advanced video functionality of the R6. However, after shooting the 100 to 500 for a few days, Rima and I both agree that the lens offers amazing clarity and sharpness. If videos like this help you with your photography, please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and press the like button. Here is what Rima thinks about the clarity of this lens. Incredibly sharp, incredibly sharp lens. It's just so, the percentage of shots that are tech sharp from this lens is significantly greater than, even though 1 to 400 is considered a very good lens, also on 1DX, a perfect combination, but this combination is just unbelievable as far as sharpness. So do you think the percentage of shots being sharp also has to do with your R5 on there, or um, would you...? Um, I don't know. Okay. Uh, it, it might, because the tracking may be better, The um, especially with the eye, eye tracking on the birds. So maybe that has to do with it, but even just, no, I would say, I, I think it's probably the lens, but because even if, you, if you're just on a stationary subject, uh, the, the sharpness is just so much greater. If you magnify even to 100, 200%, I can see that even on the stationary shots, it's sharper. After all this positive energy, I got curious, as Rima also traveled with Canon's beautiful 600 millimeter fix F4. Could the lens potentially take on a prime lens in quality? Well, that depends on your outlook. Of course, you cannot reach the same subject separation and the beautiful bouquet on a shorter lens with an aperture of f7.1 on 500 millimeters. But here are some of the pros. Well, it is my favorite lens, the 600, and it's also very, very sharp lens. And of course, the bouquet is at f4 is unbelievable. Uh, the lenses, the, the bigger lens is a lot more difficult to handle. It's more difficult to weight wise and also finding the subject in the frame or focusing on the subject uh, much, much more difficult. So the percentage of good shots from that lens is probably significantly lower than from this one, which is so much easier to handle. I would prefer be softer backgrounds. So 7.1 is a little bit too distracting as far as the backgrounds but um, in some situations it doesn't matter at all if it's action shots or you know real close-ups portraits it doesn't really matter but I do see I mean the, the images are more pleasant from the 600 f4. I actually had to remind Rima a few times to fire up her biceps and rather get the shot with the 600 millimeter prime as it was just way too comfortable and easy to pick up the 100 to 500 millimeter when push came to shove. But let's be honest, this lens wasn't designed to compete with any teleprime lens at all. It was Canon's way of substituting the well-tested 100 to 400 millimeter Mark II for the mirrorless world, which, by the way, was a workhorse for many wildlife photographers. So my first thought was that the added 100 millimeters are an absolute blessing as I felt that the 400 millimeter often falls short on a full frame sensor. Add the reduced weight and the 100 to 500 millimeter already scores incredibly well. However, how well does it compare 
to the good old 100 to 400 millimeter lens after all. Well, the first tummy feeling I had about the 100 to 500 millimeter lens was that it was incredibly sharp and the clarity was outstanding. However, I really did struggle a lot focusing in low light conditions or matter of fact, any backlit shots even in the middle of the day. I first wanted to blame the R6. However, I remembered on my previous tests with the R5 and the R6, I was shooting the 100 to 400 millimeter Mark II with the EF to RF converter and I never ran into these problems as much as on the Safari. Did you also struggle focusing on the 100 to 500 millimeter lens in low light conditions? Let me know in the comment section below. I was shooting on a single point focus with AI Servo. However, to compare the ultimate quality of the RF 100 to 500 to our good old workhorse of the 100 to 400, let's have a look at some of the images that I took and compare them. None of these images have been cropped or sharpened additional to the 40 points that Adobe Lightroom adds to any of the Canon CR files anyway. When looking at a close-up portrait of this drinking kudu ball, I actually have to start pixel peeping to see much of a difference between the two lenses. However, looking very closely, I have to admit that I do find more sharpness and details in the RF lens. When, for instance, looking into the small fine hair within the ears of the kudu, This difference increases when looking at subjects shot at larger distance, as you can see with the cheetah that we found in the delta. Add another 100 millimeters to the mix and you will find that the quality of detail you find in the RF lens starts seriously outperforming the older EF 100 to 400 millimeter Mark II, as the subject is simply closer when zooming in at 100%, allowing for more details to show. So I was really curious if that was something we could compensate for with a 1.4 times extender. Following this gorgeous female leopard, I had a chance of photographing her both on the RF 100 to 500 mm straight as well as with the 100 to 400 with an added converter. On a side note, I was shooting the 100 to 400 mm on the R6 with the EF to RF converter for the best comparison. However, I used my 1DX2 for this leopard shot, which is comparable in pixel size to the R6. Despite shifting the advantage of the focal length to the 100 to 400 mm Mark II by an extra 60 mm, you can clearly see that the extender had a serious impact on image quality, giving the RF 100 to 500 mm a further head start for crispness. This is particularly obvious when looking at the whiskers of this gorgeous cat. So even in comparison to our trusty old workhorse, my first impression was that the R100 to 500 did not just compare to the 100 400, but actually outperformed it from a quality standard. However, does that really help you if you struggle to find focus in the first place? This is something I will have to look deeper into. This lens is tech sharp is Rimmer mentioned and a lot of fun to play with in combination with one of the new mirrorless camera bodies. Especially if you make use of the new animal eye tracking which worked beautiful on the RF 100 to 500 with absolutely no delays when it could pick up on the eye. I could never ever get the birds in flight on the 600 by the time I find them in the viewfinder they're long gone and nesting somewhere but uh, with this one it's just so easy. It's almost like the camera finds the, the bird for you and focuses on the eye. It, it takes a little bit of practice, of course, but I've gotten more birds on this trip than I've done in my entire previous years of shooting. I, I didn't have an attempt at them most of the time. Now it's fun. I mean, you could actually end up with images, <laughs> sharp images, nice images. If you would like to see what can be achieved with this lens, stay tuned till the end and check out my pictures.
Have you guys played with the R100 to 500 yourself or do you consider to buy it? Let me know in the comment sections below. I hope sharing my first experiences with this lens helped you too. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye bye.